Hello, hello, it's Molly Mormon here again. I don't know much, but I know a little bit, and what little I know I'd like to share with you today. I saw a lot of little camping stoves that you put pine cones and sticks and things into on the uh, made out of tin cans on YouTube, but I didn't see this one specifically made, and so I'd like to demonstrate this as best I can. I don't have all the materials right here. This is a small little can. It's smaller than a tuna fish can. You can use three of these or one tuna fish can. You can get those little tiny cans. They come in a box of tuna salad or chicken salad. It used to be called Bumblebee. This one is Brunswick. I'm sure it's probably still the same company. And let me open this here for you. It has a little can of chicken salad and the top of the can has a zip strip on it, zip top on it, so it doesn't have a solid top. You may want to fashion some kind of a top for it by using a top of a tuna fish can covered with aluminum foil to cover the edges, a couple two or three, a couple two or three sheets of aluminum foil to cover the edges to use as a damper to put over this can. It's the traditional buddy burner with a little variety, very little variation. And this chicken salad also comes with crackers to spread the chicken salad on. So this is a really nice thing to put in your 72 hour emergency kit or to keep in your food storage. I pay a dollar for them and it has chicken salad ready to eat which is really really good. Five little crackers and a little spoon to dig it out with. So that's kind of a handy neat little thing to have. But it's the can that we're going to talk about today and it, because it's smaller than a tuna fish can this would fit inside of a tuna fish can with room to spare. So I have an emptied out little can here trying to work with what light I have. And it's the traditional concept of the buddy burner. I took tops to my cardboard box to demonstrate because they're easier to fold than cor corrugated cardboard, but the concept is to use corrugated cardboard cut in strips as wide as the can is deep. So just for illustration purposes here, so you can get some kind of an idea. Here's my little strip of paper of uh, cardboard put into the can coiled up but ideally I can't do this right here right now but ideally you're going to want to want to wind want to wind it reasonably tight but there are two methods you can use to do this I'm going to put my second gee, can't see that can you second coil there you go coil of paper in with the first coil of paper in the can you can kind of see it. Now at this point you can either wind, wind it tighter with more cardboard, preferably corrugated cardboard, or you can stuff in between these layers, which are not very visible on this, I'm sorry, with dryer lint, fabric, anything that's flammable and flexible. Then once you have your cardboard and your dryer lint or your fabric or what have you all jammed into this little can, you gently carefully melt paraffin wax or candle wax or used candles or candles that are no longer in use. Melt them very carefully. It's recommended, I understand, to do it over a double boiler so it doesn't burst into flames because if you get it too hot it will burst into flames. And pour the paraffin into this little can. Now the reason that I'm showing you this little can versus tuna fish can is because your stove is going to be constructed from a number 10 can. I'm hoping you can see this well enough. And this number 10 can is going to have a door. This one's full of banana chips at the moment. Turn this around here. It's going to have a door cut into the bottom of the can between about I don't know if you can see where my other finger is at over here. About maybe five or six inches wide and about four inches tall. You're going to cut a door very carefully with tin snips and protective gloves because you could really get cut doing this. And first, excuse me, first you're going to take a can opener and remove the entire bottom of the can. And then Actually, I take that back. I think you could do this either way. 
I think you could do this with the bottom of the can intact, or you could remove it. You can experiment with that. But the door needs to be cut very carefully with tin snips, and then the, the, the flap of the door needs to be folded upward in order to get your fuel cylinders in there, your little, your little can. So the reason I chose the smaller can today, I'm going to explain this in detail in a minute if I don't run out of time, is that I calculated you can't show you very well. Let me try to lift this up. I calculated by measuring, I turned the can on its side, actually I turned it upside down to see how many of these little cans would fit in the bottom and very snugly you can get three in there. This offers you a lot of flexibility because you can have one burner in the bottom of your little stove. You can have two burners in the bottom of your little stove or you can have three burners in the bottom of your little stove and thereby control your heat more effectively. I have been corresponding with my lifelong friend Marcy today and she informs me that the traditional ones that we made with one tuna fish can which you, it works just as well I shouldn't say that it works fine with a tuna fish can. This is just going to give you more flexibility to control your heat to have three, three little cans two or three little cans. You can take them out, put them back in, you can control your heat, I would think, much more effectively. But the reports that she gave me today, Marcy gave me today, are strictly with using a tuna fish can and the results are phenomenal. I have only used this stove myself to make grilled cheese sandwiches 32 years ago because I was taught how to do it in a girls camp situation. Let me take the lid off of this here. And when we did that, we just put the grilled cheese sandwich right on the top of the can. This stove has the benefit and the advantage of holding a great amount of the heat in the stove rather than letting the wind blow it away with stoves that are open on the top. So the concept is your pan goes right on the top of this closed can. Your bottom is either open or closed. You have a door on the side that controls the oxygen that gets into the can and thereby controls the burn rate and the heat of the stove. So you're going to want your flap open wider for greater heat and more cylinders. I shouldn't call them cylinders, but I don't know what else to call them. These little burners. More burners lit if you want a higher heat or a quicker boil. Now I am told and I believe my friend Marcy because she's been there and done that. I am told that this stove, once you get your little door cut open and you get your little cylinders in there, you get them lit, your little burners in there, you get them lit, will boil water with no problem. She uh, took canoeing trips and said that they even set the little buddy burners, the little, little cans filled with paraffin and and cardboard. They set them between rocks and were able to cook enough food for 50 people. That's amazing to me. That's just absolutely amazing. So if you had 20 or 50 of these on your shelf all ready to go, you would be doing pretty good for preparedness and emergency reasons. So the only opening in this can is the little door. Now if you wanted to modify that, you could take a punch can opener and you could go around the bottom and put a few holes in and you could e even put a few holes around the top. I'm not really sure why you'd want to do that, but I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. If this little stove with one tuna fish can in it will cook, and she, I asked her raw vegetables and burger and that kind of thing, and she said yes, raw vegetables and burger and so on and so forth. Enough heat will come through the lid of this with the lid on the lid intact to be able to cook that much food, I don't know why you'd want to take the lid off. I don't know why you'd want to put more holes in it. But like I said, I'm not, I'm not an expert. I'm just bent on passing information along that might be useful to you in an emergency. I would venture to guess, and this is only a guess, that if you had two or three of these stoves, and most of us have lots of these number 10 cans hanging around our house. <laughs> If you had two or three of these and you placed a, like a stove rack, you could take it right out of your stove. 
we have an extra one at the moment. If you took a rack and placed it over two or three of these cans, I would be willing to bet that you could boil a whole water bath canning pot. The same thing could be accomplished by building a nice campfire, but you may not have access to the, the uh, fuel to go out collecting sticks and timber and so forth if you're in a situation where you need to can without excess fuel. This is getting a little long here. Let me see if I can see the time on it. Over time. I think I'm going over time. I'm going to stop this video and put anything else I need to in another video. Thank you.